In the world of Naruto, conflicts among nations isn't anything new. Throughout its history, there have been three major ninja wars that have pitted nation against nation. One major war where all the shinobi of the world united against a common threat, but there have also been smaller proxy wars that continue now even in this peaceful Boruto era. However, with Naruto Uzumaki as the current Hokage of the village and Sasuke Uchiha being the one watching the village from the shadows, no one in their right mind would attempt to directly go to war with Konoha. Well, well, not exactly. In the faraway land of Radaku, while Kakashi was on his S rank mission to find a cure for Naruto's deadly chakra illness, one that nearly killed the Sage of Six Paths, the Prime Minister of Radaku had seemingly chosen the perfect time to begin his war against the Land of Fire, which ultimately would have brought him to the doorsteps of the Hidden Leaf Village, since Konoha became the capital of the Land of Fire during Naruto's tenure as Hokage. So, in today's edition of Kakashi Resident, we're going to be taking a look at why the Prime Minister chose to start a war against the Land of Fire and Kakashi's response to this threat to the Land of Fire during the time when Konoha's two strongest ninja were out of action, with Naruto unable to fully mold Chakra due to the Chakra illness that gave him heart attack like symptoms, and Sasuke Uchiha soon being on his way to Radaku desperately in search for a cure for Naruto, with his wife Sakura falling close behind with the two members of Team 7, hoping to find Naruto's cure before Naruto died. In previous videos, we looked at the current state of Radaku, a land where the Sage of Six Paths once lived. What was once a lush and vibrant land was now diseased by famine and drought. Bodies lined the streets in some villages due to the lack of water and what little water was available in some of these cases wasn't even safe to drink. The rightful heir to the throne, Prince Nanar, refused to take his position as king. His sister, Queen Minari, had attempted to end the drought by using the Suigu, a tool that the Sage of Six Paths once wielded, and her lack of control caused entire crops to be flooded. It's after going through the various books looking for Naruto's cure that Kakashi, pretending to be a tutor to Prince Nanar, finally comes face to face with the Prime Minister, a man that Kakashi had already made his mind up to overthrow during a mission to find Naruto's cure. Being the observant ninja that he is, Kakashi suspects that a war is headed for Konoha. 50 high-level rogue ninja had already been purchased by the Prime Minister, and there are signs that the Prime Minister planned to purchase even more. Posing as a maiden who works inside of the palace, Kakashi hears more whispers about the looming war that's headed for the village, which it should be noted that the Hokage isn't in position to fully defend yet. While Kakashi sneaks around the royal palace, going into the king's library, stealing passages related to the Sage of Six Paths, hoping that one of them has Naruto's cure, the prime minister makes the case for war that he already has mercenary ninja lined up for. After eating a meal consisting of hawk and goat cheese, the prime minister reveals why the land of fire is the perfect land to invade and when you look at it his logic isn't flawed so it's here i'm gonna begin quoting this scene from the novel and then i'll come back to you guys my thoughts and it's here i'm gonna begin quoting the prime minister kept nodding some years ago i got to go away to the mountains because of the king's health struggles the land of fire existed beyond these mountains and beyond a number of countries and the leader of that land he was called a feudal lord he wasn't referred to as a king some of the senior officials hadn't yet heard about the land of fire the existence of the land of fire was finally being confirmed by the prime minister so was there a six hokage was he real yes he exists too unfortunately i went out of the country for a meeting so i didn't get a chance to see him personally but what surprised me was the high development of the country amazing foods excellent medical care and a welfare system for his people highly developed technology they move dozens of kilos of iron and they do it at tremendous speed on top of all of that people they even ride on it as passengers. Not only that, but the people, they have small palm-sized machines. They use it to share information instantly from faraway places. No one in that country starves to death. Rather, there are more people who die because they eat too much sugar. I don't know. Nanara drank some of the water. This didn't sound right to him. Indeed, the land of fire, it hasn't experienced war for more than a decade. Now is the perfect time for an invasion while they focus on peace. Nanara-sama, did you know that there's a group called Shinobi in the land of fire in his neighbors. These are people who can manipulate chakra and produce fire and water from absolutely nothing. The Six Hokage. The Six Hokage was a shinobi himself. I traveled all around the country. I learned how they made their weapons. On top of all of that, there are ninja who leave their countries and they operate individually. For this war we're about to engage, we have already hired 50 shinobi. In the first place, I think that they're different creatures from us. We can use that to our advantage. The atmosphere of the palace was quickly beginning to change. 50 shinobi
shinobi were on their side. They felt like they could surely win this war. The Prime Minister was sure. The existence of shinobi is so special for the residents of Radaku because they don't have a strong military strength. It's almost non-existent. The Prime Minister knew that war was inevitable now that he presented this information as he looked at the senior officials. He must all listen to me. The water shortage. It's a test given to us by God. When we get over there and we get over all of this and secure this new land, we can develop ourselves and we can be better than the land of fire. We already have approval from the queen. In quote. So what I find fascinating here is that the prime minister of Radaku once traveled to the land of fire during the time that Kakashi was Hokage, but he never actually saw him, which isn't too crazy when you look at the lore. So Konoha during this time was not yet the capital of the land of fire. That doesn't happen until Naruto becomes Hokage. And the Hokage at times was required to travel to meet him, which is likely the case here. It was during his travel through the land of fire that the prime minister grew very ambitious. He saw the very early stages of the high speed rail trains that Dinky's father created. He also saw how lavishly people in the land of fire live, dealing with very much first world problems, whereas his land had been limited in food. The people in the land of fire got to choose from many different foods. There was a plethora to pick from, from sugary foods that led to obesity and obesity related diseases such as diabetes. The land of fire was also a land where somebody like Naruto Uzumaki had the luxury of eating ramen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, something Naruto could not do if he grew up in Radaku. Despite knowing about the existence of Shinobi and seeing firsthand Shinobi be able to use fire style, lightning style, and water style jutsu, the prime minister came to the conclusion that some of the current five kage in Boruto's era have already shared with Naruto, which is this new era is far too peaceful. The Shinobi aren't ready for a threat of a mass scale conflict. To be a bit blunt, the prime minister viewed the land of fire much in the same way that a desperate criminal views a wealthy person walking through a bad neighborhood. They're basically a walking lick that's waiting to get got. Or for some of you guys who don't understand that, they're basically somebody who is food ready to be eaten. They're basically a target to get robbed. So the prime minister knew that his best way of pulling off this invasion was to fight fire with fire. The land of fire had many skilled shinobi. Shinobi whose battle senses had been dull due to 16 years of peace. So the prime minister realized that he had to hire high level rogue shinobi of his own, hoping that they, by catching the land of fire off guard, would be able to take that land over. It's after Kakashi is confronted by the prime minister, while Kakashi is pretending to be a maiden that Kakashi realizes that there's another reason for the invasion. The prime minister, for lack of better words, is desperate, not just for power, but also to improve the economic outlook of his land. Trading with Konoha directly never crossed his mind. Instead, his first thought was to seize and control the distribution of goods. On top of all of that, Kakashi's good deeds of using chakra to create water for those who are dying of thirst and filling up the water tanks in the villages that Kakashi passed with clean water that was made from water released chakra had gotten onto the prime minister's radar. Though he had never seen the six Hokage Kakashi Hadake himself, the presence of a tutor who happened to be named Kakashi during a time when all these mysterious acts of kindness wasn't something that the prime minister missed, but he couldn't confirm it. And he made his suspicions very clear when he spoke of ninja being able to change their appearances using their jutsu. However, that's gonna be it for this latest installment of Kakashi Retsuden. I'll be back with another one soon, and I wanna leave a question to you guys. Do you guys think that the prime minister is wrong? And do you think that if a person's desperate enough, it can make them go to extremes? Who do you find right in this situation? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.